Oh, you get a bento box and it's great value for this price. All those things. Real nice. Uh, don't you think it should be something more like this? That is but cheaper. Oh hey, fall really is in full swing, isn't it? You know what that means? That means the holidays are coming. It's the perfect time to get my cookbook. If you haven't gotten it, then that, the time is now, brother. New York Times bestseller four times in a row. It's in stores everywhere. It's 40% off on Amazon. The link is in the description. Go and get it. So Bento Box is like a meal with ADD. A perfect meal for someone like myself. Now, it's a plethora of many different things. You got tempura this and a cabbage salad here and rice here. It's all sorts of things in one. If you're indecisive, welcome to your dreamland. The whole concept of it creates this idea that you're getting a great deal. You're spending this much money and getting a large array slash assortment of things. But if you made it yourself and you took a little bit of love and care, paid attention, we can make it a whole lot cheaper. So with all that said, let's make this, shall we? Let's make this easy to understand. A bento box consists of many elements. Ours consists of a beautiful teriyaki chicken, perfectly cooked rice that has been washed for God's sake, a spicy garlic dipping sauce, cabbage slaw, and last but certainly not least is an ultra easy tempura vegetable. Let's start with the spicy mayo. It's one of the most basic sauces I can possibly think of. If you think you can't cook and you cannot make a spicy mayo, then you might be right. That's a joke, anyone can cook. Start with a small bowl and combine a quarter cup or 62 grams of mayo, two tablespoons or 29 grams of sriracha, three cloves of garlic grated, season to taste with salt, then add one tablespoon or 11 grams of white distilled vinegar. Whisk together until combined, then keep refrigerated until it's time to use your sauce, sauce, sauce. Next up, rice. Well, yeah, cook it accordingly for the one billionth time. I I'm At this point, I'm gonna stop saying it. Wash your rice, cook it in a rice cooker if you have one. I'm using one and a half cups or 300 grams of short grain rice and one and a half cups or 350 grams of water. Pop down the rice cooker and you got rice. Now the rice you choose obviously pretty greatly influences the price, so choose the cheapest stuff you can find. Just none of that instant crap, please. Right, cabbage slaw, also unbelievably easy. And if you're wondering, yes, I'm front loading you with all the easy stuff because I'm performing mental and emotional culinary acrobatics for you. It really doesn't get that much harder though. First begin with half a head of green cabbage. And you might be wondering, Josh, why do you always use half a head? Well, that's because for some reason when you shave cabbage, it somehow grows 323.26 times in volume. Don't know how, it just does. So half a head shaved as thinly as you can. Feel free to use a death trap mandolin to keep your shavings even. Pop that into a bowl along with one to two large carrots julienne. Then to that, you'll add three tablespoons or 42 grams of mayo, two cloves of garlic grated, season to taste lightly with salt, two tablespoons or 26 grams of white vinegar, and one tablespoon or 15 grams of soy sauce, and also a one inch knob of ginger grated. Nothing better than grating your knob on a Sunday morning. Toss all that together until perfectly dressed in every little cabbagey crevice, and pop in the fridge to let those flavors get to know each other nicely. You know, you gotta let them form an inseparable emotional bond so that you can eat every last little cabbage thread in front of it. Next up, chicken teriyaki. First, let's make the teriyaki sauce. In a medium sized sauce pot, add just enough vegetable oil to coat the bottom of the pan, toss in two cloves of thinly sliced garlic, and let that saute just until it starts to toast and turn a golden color. Please don't take it past golden brown unless you want to taste real bad, in which case, you've ruined it. Great job, pal. Check mark for being culinary. Oop. Anyway, then add a quarter cup or 62 grams of granulated sugar, a quarter cup or 58 grams of soy sauce, a quarter cup or 58 grams of white distilled vinegar, stir that together to dissolve and bring that up to a boil. Once that comes to a boil, reduce the heat to low and simmer and reduce by about 25%, which will take around three to five minutes. Then in a small bowl, combine one teaspoon or two grams of cornstarch and two teaspoons or eight grams of water. Whisk that together to make a slurry, then whisk that slurry into your simmering teriyaki sauce and let it continue to cook down until it reaches a nice glazy consistency. And this should be Glossy, glossy, glossy. Strain it through a mesh strainer. If you want to keep it clean, you know what they say, dirty sauce, dirty mind. Now that you have your teriyaki sauce, let's make the chicken. Look, please don't overcomplicate this. Yaki, what does yaki mean? Oh yeah, usually that's going to imply being grilled, not cooked in a medically sterile nonstick pan. Get down and dirty, brother. If you can get your hands on a Conroe grill, also known as a yakitori style grill, you know, the kind that uses bean jotan, load it up with preheated white hot bean jotan in the bottom, light one side of your grill to be very high heat and the other side to be very low or completely off. Get yourself four large chicken thighs, boneless and skinless, season your chicken lightly with salt, grease your grates, then pop it onto the high side of the grill, flipping often 
until beautifully colored on both sides and the internal temperature reaches 165 Fahrenheit. Now brush your chicken with your teriyaki sauce to glaze, flip so that the glaze side is physically on the grill glaze. <laughs> Impossible to say. It's on the hot, it's on the hot stuff, okay? Blast it on the got bang heat till the glaze gets nice and tacky. It's what you want. Glaze again and repeat on the other side. Once your chicken is done, cover with foil to keep warm for our final move, the tempura. It's honestly super easy. So hold your horses before you get your fingers flying in the comments. In a medium sized bowl, add half a cup or 75 grams of all purpose flour. To that, you're gonna whisk in gently one cup or 240 milliliters of chilled carbonated water until you have a nice loose batter. Then pop in an ice cube or two to keep the mixture cold and that's your tempura batter. Now, we need to pick our vegetables. Here, I'm gonna use half of a butternut squash, peeled, then sliced into half moons. Then I cut off about one cup worth of broccoli florets from the stem and one sweet onion sliced into nice three quarter inch rounds. Of course, separating the rings out from the rounds. It, it's, it's onion rings, yeah. Pretty basic. Now, we have all our vegetables. Look at that. It's a beautiful time. It's like a little garden. A garden ready to be deep fried. Now, get yourself a five quart pot filled halfway with vegetable oil and heated to 350 Fahrenheit. Dredge your vegetable of choice into just plain all purpose flour, shake off the excess, and dunk into your batter and immediately drop into your oil. Don't hold on to your dripping coated vegetable and let the goddamn horses come home spanking your grandpa oh. and the. I don't know what I'm saying. We gotta move quick when making tempura. Now optionally, while it's frying, you can use your hand to dip in the batter and allow additional batter to drip onto the vegetable as it fries. This will create nice little crispity, crunchy little thingy dingies on the vegetable. This is called painting your tempura. Sounds so poetic. Ah yes, in the cool breeze of the Swiss Alps, I like to spend my time painting tempura on the terrace. Anyway, let that fry until it reaches a beautiful, crisp, deep golden color. Drain on a wire rack and immediately season generously with salt, and you can add any other seasonings at this point like togarashi or whatever you like. But you see, the beauty of tempura isn't just how you can season it, but rather the plethora of things you can dip it in. Speaking of beauty, let's assemble this thing. Now, you can either do this on a plate or in an actual bento box setup. In this case, I'm using uh, a bento box. First, begin by filling the center well with your spicy mayo. Add a little padding of thinly sliced raw cabbage in one of the medium slots. Slice up a chicken thigh, place it atop the cabbage, then a nice mix of your vegetable tempura. I've got three here, butternut, onion, and the broccoli. This is a god dang tempura medley. Next, your cabbage slaw, and then a nice layer of your rice. And since this already sort of has a shape, I decided to get geometric and press the rice into the shape of the mold. Ah, uh, yeah, I know, very Michelin. Sorry for flexing so hard. All right, we're done, right? You think I would stop without garnishing? Wow, unbelievable that you would think that lowly of me. Many of these are, of course, optional, except the green onion and additional teriyaki. To the mayo, added a little line of togarashi spice. Then, naturally, to the rice, a nice little furikake garnish. Artfully, of course, in the opposing direction of the togarashi. Wow. Add some additional teriyaki sauce to your chicken, along with a nice generous sprinkle of thinly sliced green onion. And that right there, homies, is a beautiful bento box. For this price per box, right here, people are thinking they're getting some sort of value in their bento box when you should have come to Papa's bento box shop right here. Now let's see if this is as enjoyable as it is to look at. So you sit down to eat and they just put that right in front of you. What are you doing? I'm gonna look down and just immediately look right back at the waiter, waitress, whomever, and be like, <laughs> God damn! That is what a bento box should look like. Now wait, Josh, but I like it like this, or I like it like this. Shut up! Fine, mix and match, use different vegetables. You don't want tempura, do some sort of green salad with a miso dressing. You can still keep the price pretty low because this comes out to this price right here per person. You're not gonna go anywhere and find that, all right? Let me tell you, right got dang now. Oh, but I wanna add sushi, uh. If you wanna add makimono rolls, we have a guide that's but cheaper already in the links in the description. You like that plug? You're welcome. All right, so I'll break this all down. Chicken. I understand that it's not quite realistic to grill it if it's a butt cheaper. If you don't have a grill, put it in a pan. It's gonna be just as good because the teriyaki sauce takes it all the way home. Perfectly balanced, smoky, cooked, juicy. Always go for the thigh over the breast. The rice, I mean, the rice is nice. I mean, look at this. Look at that! The rice is the most important component to this entire meal. We all know how I feel about rice. It must be perfectly cooked. Wash it for God's sake! And cook it in a rice cooker. Cabbage slaw, as opposed to like a miso ginger salad. You could do that too. It's a symphony. Much better than a salad. Texturally more exciting, the crunch, you have a layer of flavors, garlic, ginger. It's creamy yet acidic. It cuts the richness of all this. It almost brings it together like it's a little happy family. Last but not least, tempura. First off, let's get a sound check on this. The crunch on this is immaculate. And we have this beautiful dipping sauce right here, nice and spicy little dip. All of this put together, a symphony in my mouth. I can see it, everyone watching me. I'm conducting it in the lower, Hey, Kate. What? Come on, you're tasting now. 
Ooh, that's yummy. Can I eat this? Okay, well, you gotta finish the video. Bye. Anyway, it's a symphony in front of you. I can see everyone. And something almost needs to constrain me a little bit because Lord have mercy, I have busted. You never gonna find a bento box like this ever again. You hear me? You wanna know where else you can have many things to put in your mouth for very little cost? B-roll. Very fun. At this point, all these butt cheapers that we've done, it does come down to cooking it yourself, but there's little things that you do. It's not just about the ingredients, it's about the technique. You can make great flavor with minimal ingredients. That's the whole goddamn point. You think these restaurants don't know that? They care about their top line, they care about their margin, all right? So when you're paying that money, you're not getting uh, the deal you think you're getting. That's what we learned. Now, with all that said, if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, which, like I said, we learned that, so you should have learned something, then like and subscribe, and I will see you next time.